this lecture, I will talk about uh, two uh, mostly used uh, renewable energy uh, so, uh, systems. One is called uh, wind turbine or wind energy system, wind energy conversion system. Another is uh, solar energy. Okay, and solar energy uh, is of two types. One is called photovoltaic energy. Another is called solar concentration power. So that I will talk about. Okay, and uh, in my last lecture, I gave you a, a brief overview on uh, what is called wind energy conversion system. So, in this uh, lecture, we will continue that and we will uh, show you how uh, we will get uh, or how much power we will get uh, from a typical wind turbine, how to determine the efficiency of the wind turbine and how do we generally extract power from this wind turbine. Okay. So, as uh, in last lecture I mentioned that uh, wind power is a source of intermittent power and uh, it is uh, usually depend upon the speed of the wind and uh, the speed of the wind throughout a day uh, used to be variable or used to be varying in nature. Okay. And that is why uh, whatever power that we will get from a typical wind energy conversion system that is also uh, varying uh, in nature, time varying in nature. Uh, so, we will discuss uh, on what exactly characteristics of a wind turbine has. Okay. So, wind turbine is of a uh, intermittent and uh, it depends upon weather and power output of a wind turbine will vary as the wind varies. Okay. Uh, even though most of the rapid variation will do some extent of the compensated for the by the energy of the wind turbine rotor. Now, this is the expression for uh, power available uh, to a wind, but this is not the expression for how much power we are getting from the wind turbine. This is the expression for power available in wind. Now, what is actually this for? So, if you consider that power available in wind is p in watt or kilowatt. Uh, so, this depends upon uh, a variable rho, where rho is the mass density of air. So, it is proportional to rho it is also proportional to A. A is the circular cross section area that is called swept area. We already discussed about what is called swept area. So, it is the uh, I can show you I can go back and show you it is the area under this circle. Uh, suppose this typical three blade wind turbine say this is the center of the turbine or the shaft of the turbine and this is suppose the radius. Okay, art which is almost equal to the length of the blade, okay, length of a typical blade. So, if this is r, this is radius is r and it forms a circular area, then this area is called swept area we discussed in the last lecture. Okay. So, typically this power availability in wind depend upon this swept area and also it is proportional to the cube of the wind velocity it is proportional to the cube of the wind velocity. So, power available in wind depends upon or it is proportional to the mass density of the air, the swept area and it is also proportional to the cube of the wind velocity. Okay. That does not mean that that much of power we will get actually uh, from this wind turbine. Uh, we have several other factors that I will come to that. Now, before I go to in detail uh, the wind turbine characteristics, one thing one needs to know that wind speed. So, you can see the most dominant factor here is the wind speed. Basically, rho uh, used to be fixed in a particular area and A it is also constant uh, because uh, for a particular turbine we cannot increase the swept area. It is a design uh, parameter and uh, for a particular wind turbine it 
used to be constant. So, this part is all this part is constant. Okay. So, only part uh, only uh, V is variable which is wind velocity. So, basically power available in wind uh, is varying with the cube of the wind speed that one should know. So, uh, if wind speed increases power available to the wind increases cube of that. Okay. Uh, so, of course, we need to know that what is the value of wind velocity in order to find out uh, how much power can be available or how much power is available corresponding to a typical wind speed. So, wind speed also varies uh, with the height of the tower. So, a taller tower is expected to result in higher spe wind speed. Okay. So, relationship with this tower height and this wind velocity is given over here. So, you can see uh, it is proportional to h to the power some constant that is called roughness or friction coefficient. Uh, so, wind speed is typically varying uh, proportional to this h to the power a, where a is the roughness or friction coefficient. So, if you uh, make a taller tower, you will expect uh, you will obviously get a higher wind speed. Okay. So, therefore, you will be having uh, more power available uh, at that particular wind speed. Okay. Now, this is the uh, most important thing that I was talking about the characteristics of a wind turbine and for us uh, for a uh, distribution system engineers or power system engineers, we need to understand how this power available in the wind varies with uh, this, this velocity of the wind and uh, we cannot expect that uh, we can run a wind turbine at any velocity, at any wind velocity because as you know like other electrical appliances or like other uh, electrical generators, the wind turbine uh, generator set will have some rating. So, it cannot produce uh, energy beyond its rating. So, we need to know that uh, how can or how much uh, power we can get from a typical wind turbine. So, uh, let me show you this typical power curve, this is called power curve, which means that power out, uh, input versus this wind speed, power input versus this wind speed. Now, this uh, gives you uh, that there are some there are some operating point, one is this this operating point is called cut in speed. Okay. So, this is the minimum speed uh, at which this wind turbine would operate. So, below this cut in speed we cannot operate a wind turbine. Okay. So, cut in speed is the minimum wind speed uh, to, to operate a wind turbine. Okay. And there is another operating point that is correspond to the rated wind speed which gives you the rated power. Uh, of this wind turbine. So, this is another operating point and from this cut in spin to the rated speed, uh, this production of power uh, in a typical wind turbine will vary according to this cube of this uh, wind velocity because uh, here this characteristics is similar to p varying cube of the wind speed. Okay. And there is another operating point that is called shutdown speed or falling speed. This is the maximum wind speed at which we can operate a typical wind turbine. So, there is a minimum speed. So, cut in speed is minimum speed, minimum speed and cut off uh, shutdown speed or falling speed is the maximum speed. Okay. So, this uh, is uh, speeds are uh, marked over this uh, horizontal axis that is x axis. So, here for this particular uh, curve uh, you can see uh, 8 mile per hour uh, is the cut in speed for this wind turbine. That means, that below that particular speed we cannot operate the wind turbine okay. and 40 mile per hour is basically uh, the wind speed that is the shutdown speed. So, if wind speed becomes higher than this uh, shutdown speed we also cannot operate. So, below this cut in speed and above this uh, uh, shutdown speed, we cannot operate this wind turbine okay, because of its design construction, because of this uh, its characteristics. And here the uh, this 25 
mile per hour is the rated speed for this wind turbine. So, from this rated speed to shutdown speed, even if that power available of the wind will be higher than that, but we will operate this wind turbine at this rated power and that is a flat top characteristics. So, beyond this uh, you know rated speed up to this shutdown speed, we will operate this wind turbine at its rated power because it cannot provide uh, you any amount of power even if whatever amount of power is available in the wind. Okay. So, uh, so, beyond this rated, rated speed even if that power availability in the wind is higher. So, we, this wind turbine is capable of providing you its rated power. Okay. So, whatever I mentioned over uh, is uh, mentioned here. So, cut in speed is basically the minimum allowable wind speed at which this wind turbine will operate and uh, rated speed is or rated power wind power is as per the rating of the turbine which is designed and also rated speed corresponds to the rated power of this wind turbine that means uh, at what uh, wind speed uh, this turbine is generating or wind turbine is generating the rated power that is called rated speed and the south down speed is the maximum allowable speed at which we can operate the turbine. Now, we have an example. So, this example is very uh, simple uh, and it is uh, based upon this uh, figure shown over this uh, slide that uh, we have different wind speed in different duration of a day. Okay. So, for 2 hours uh, the wind speed is 6 mile per hour, for 3 hours uh, wind speed is 10 mile per hour and for 2 hours wind speed is 15 mile per hour and for 1 hour uh, the wind speed is 20 mile per hour. Now, you have to determine that how much energy that is not extractable, but that is uh, available in the wind. Okay? That is not that cannot be resultant electrical output this is not this electrical output, but this is basically uh, that much of wind speed is available. Uh, that much of power is available in the wind. So, you can find out in different operating condition one is uh, 6 mile per hour, 15 mile per hour, 10 mile per hour and 20 mile per hour. So, uh, corresponding to these values you can find out. So, this is 6 mile per hour uh, and then next is 10 mile per hour, then next is 15 mile per hour and another is 20 mile per hour. So, corresponding to this you can find out that how much power is available in the wind. Okay. At 6 mile per hour since it is less than the cutting speed that is 8 mile per hour we cannot generate any uh, power, but uh, corresponding to 10, 15 and 20 mile per hour we can generate uh, power corresponding to these values uh, of power. Okay. Now, uh, so we find out that at 6 mile per hour uh, this generation would be 0 at 10 mile per hour it is 0.35 kilowatt. So, since the duration or for this particular wind speed of 3 hour, so total energy that is available in the wind is that much. Similarly, uh, at 15 mile per hour uh, that much uh, that means corresponding to 15 mile per hour you can get this much of you know uh, power available in the wind and accordingly you can find out that how much energy is available by multiplying the duration of the day on which you have that much of wind velocity. And similar to that at 20 mile per hour wind uh, power availability that much and duration is of 1 hour. So, this gives is that much. So, this is what the total energy for this 8 hour. Now, similar problem is there uh, where uh, this duration is 24 hours and uh, this wind speeds are given in different duration 6 mile per hour for 6 hour, 10 mile per hour for 6 hour, 15 mile per hour for 6 hour and 20 mile per hour for 6 hour. We are supposed to determine the total energy available in the wind. So, that is eventually can be done by similar way. Okay. So, only duration is changed. So, accordingly you multiply it with 6 uh, and uh, you will get if you sum up this all this energy you will get total energy available in the wind in a particular day. Okay. 
Now, there is another example where the parameters are given. Uh, one is blade length that is 30 meter uh, that is wind turbine blade length. Another is wind speed that is given as 1.6 meter per second. Then air density is also given. You are supposed to calculate the wind power or power available in the wind. Okay. So, you simply apply uh, this expression where values of rho a and v are given to you. So, rho is can directly put this value. A is the swept area that is pi a multiplied by r square, r is the uh, equal to almost blade length. So, which is this is our a or swept area, this is rho and this is the velocity. Okay. So, if you put this, this will come to uh, some value that is 7.09 kilowatt. So, this is very, very easy and straightforward problem. Okay. So, similar to that we have this example 4, where uh, this velocity of the wind turbine is given, uh, air density is also given. Then you have been asked to determine that what should be the length of the blade, so that you can produce 1 kilowatt of power. Again uh, you apply this expression, uh, here uh, you know uh, p is known to us 1 kilowatt, rho and uh, v are known to us. So, you can find out what should be the a and accordingly what should be r that is coming out to be some value. Similarly, here uh, this blade length is given, uh, air density is given, you have to find out that how what should be the wind speed, so that we can get 1 kilowatt of power or so that this uh, 1 kilowatt of power is available in the wind. So, you can do in the similar way, you can, uh, can apply this expression where p is known to us, rho is known to us and a is known to us, you are supposed to determine v that is wind speed. So, you can get some value. Now, that is the most important point that I am trying to make that this wind power is not the power output of a wind turbine that is basically power available in the wind. And we have some factors to be multiplied in order to find out the output of the uh, uh, wind turbine. So, whatever this expression you have uh, seen that p is equal to half rho a v cube, that expression gives you the power availability in the wind, but that does not give you the power output of the wind turbine. Okay? So, this uh, power available in the wind cannot be 100 percent extractable. So, we cannot get 100 percent extraction of the power availability in the wind. So, we have to multiply it with uh, multiply this with some factors in order to find out the power output of the wind turbine. Now, here we should know that how you what are the factors uh, that govern in wind energy generation and also what are the factors on which this efficiency of the wind energy conversion system depends. Okay. Or of course, you have seen that uh, you know all are the parameter that rotor swept area A, uh, height uh, of the tower on which this velocity will depend that also an uh, factor. And also the AP, how efficiently the wind turbine can convert this uh, power ab, uh, kinetic energy of the wind or power available in, in the wind to the electrical power that is also an important factor. Okay. And uh, this is you know that over the years this uh, designer that we uh, who designs uh, this wind energy conversion system, they design a very tall wind uh, turbine. So, and uh, having a uh, very longer wind blade uh, which gives you higher swept area and from which higher amount of power can be extractable. Okay. So, those things are there, but apart from that we have one uh, another different parameters one is called efficiency of the generator and also efficiency of the all the uh, stakeholder uh, who are there in this con wind energy conversion system. One is called uh, efficiency of the gear box which is used to change this rotation, rotational speed of the wind turbine to the speed of the uh, rotational speed of this wind turbine blade to the speed of the generator at which we are uh, we would like to generate. Uh, so, we have a gear box. So, he, its efficiency also needs to be multiplied and uh, this 
generator efficiency needs to be multiplied and wind turbine efficiency needs to be multiplied in order to get the power output that from this wind energy conversion system. But apart from that there is another uh, factor that is called uh, power coefficient. Okay. So, that power coefficient also plays an important role. Now, what do you mean by this power coefficient? Uh, this power coefficient I think is discussed over here. Uh, this is usually power coefficient is discussed over here. So, this power coefficient means how much power can be make how much uh, power available in the wind can be convertible to the mechanical power. Okay. So, if you multiply power in wind with this power coefficient that is C p power coefficient, then whatever you will get that will be power extracted from a wind turbine. Okay. So, power available in the wind needs to be multiplied with this power coefficient C p in order to get that how much power we can extract from a typical wind turbine. Okay. And this power coefficient uh, it varies with several other factor. One is called tip to speed ratio, tip speed ratio. I will come to that what is tip speed ratio. Another is of, of course, the pitch uh, of that particular blade and uh, there are two control uh, actions uh, should be there in order to ex maximize the power extraction. One is called uh, pitch control, another is called TSR control. Okay. So, this pitch control is basically controlling the pitch of the blade, so that uh, you can make uh, this orientation of the blade uh, to an optimal angle of attack to the wind. Okay. And uh, people are working on this pitch control and also TSR control I will come to that I will show you a characteristic uh, where uh, this C p is how the C p is varying with this TSR. Okay. So, depending upon that we can uh, also have an optimum value of TSR corresponding to uh, a maximum value of C p. Okay. And uh, this maximum value of this power coefficient uh, is determined from this Beats law and it is near to 0.59. So, that means in an ideal case only uh, 59 percent power can be extracted uh, at max 59 percent power can be extracted from a typical wind turbine. Okay. So, this is what uh, this tip speed definition of tip speed ratio, it is the ratio of the tangential speed uh, of this uh, blade of the rotor uh, of your wind turbine to the uh, this wind speed. So, what is it is the ratio of tangential speed of the blade of the rotor to the wind speed. So, tangential speed of this tip of the rotor is nothing but omega multiplied by r as you know. So, omega can be replaced by uh, this 2 pi multiplied by this uh, speed in r p m divided by 60 and multiplied by r. So, this gives you the tangential speed, tangential speed at the tip of the rotor. Okay. So, this uh, if you uh, divide by with this actual speed of the uh, wind, then whatever you will get that is tip to speed ratio. Okay. This is an important factor on which the efficiency or, or on which the power coefficient will vary. Now, how this power coefficient will vary with this, this uh, tip speed ratio, which is represented by uh, often lambda that is lambda. So, here you can see this is how this tip speed ratio is varying and this is how power coefficient is varying. Okay. And there are five different cases mentioned. One is turbine free of losses that is ideal case, that is ideal case, so, that is a uh, 
hypothetical case does not exist in practical form. So, uh, in that case this uh, you know if you increase this tip speed ratio power coefficient will increase, but up to a certain point it will stop that is uh, as per this bits coefficient that value is 0 0.5926 that is maximum amount of power or maximum uh, fractional power ex extractable from this wind turbine. Okay. So, this is hypothetical case, but this case 2 uh, it is a typically uh, you know uh, older form of this wind turbine which is used in wind mill, wind mill long time ago. So, this wind mill uh, this uh, tip speed ratio versus this uh, you know power coefficient characteristics is something like that and which gives you maximum value of power coefficient close to 0 0.2 that means only 20 percent of power can be extracted from this wind mill. Okay. This is basically uh, these two are basically two horizontal axis uh, wind turbine, two horizontal axis wind turbine one is having three blades another is having two blades and these are the types which are used in the present day one is called uh, horizontal axis three blade wind turbine another is called horizontal axis uh, two blade wind turbine. So, they are typical uh, C p versus uh, lambda characteristics that is uh, power coefficient versus tip speed characteristics is shown over here. So, one is uh, this number 3 characteristics and another is uh, number 5 characteristics. Both are uh, close to each other where you can get uh, uh, maximum value of power coefficient correspond to uh, a given value of tip speed and that is something uh, similar closer to uh, 6 to 8 and uh, you know maximum value of C p is around uh, 0.4 that is 40 percent of power at max can be extractable. Okay. And this number 4 this is a uh, typical vertical axis wind turbine. Okay. This is a vertical axis wind turbine and it characteristics is uh, given over here where your maximum value of C p is bit less it is around 0.3 that is 30 percent of wind power can be extractable and according to that uh, you know T speed max the value corresponding to this uh, T speed is also uh, in between 6 and 8. So, these characteristics are uh, will give you some idea that how can we control the operation of the uh, wind turbine and accordingly uh, we, we need to design a, a proper control approach so that we can extract uh, this maximum power from the wind or uh, so that we can operate the wind turbine corresponding to the maximum value of power coefficient. Okay. So, these are some example where you can see that blade radius is given, power output is given, velocity is given, air density is given, TSR is given. So, you have to determine the RPM of the rotor. And similar way, this, uh, this tip speed ratio expression that you have seen, uh, it is uh, also uh, you can find out with this TSR is nothing but tangential speed, which is omega r uh, divided by this wind speed. So, you can find out. Similarly, here also you are supposed to determine that. Uh, T speed of the rotor where T s r is given, wind velocity is given. So, you can easily determine. So, apart from this C p that is power coefficient as I said there are some uh, factors who dominate the efficiency of the wind turbine or wind energy conversion system. One is called gearbox efficiency and uh, as I mentioned that why we require gearbox because you know rotor of the wind turbine typically rotates as a uh, not a very high speed only 20 to 30 rpm uh, and uh, the generator needs the rotation of somewhat uh, closer to 1500 rpm. So, you have to change the speed uh, 30 rpm to 15 close to 1500 rpm and that speed change is possible by using gearbox. So, we have uh, to have a gearbox in a typical wind turbine and the overall efficiency of power uh, wind turbine also depends upon the gearbox efficiency. Okay. So, overall efficiency of the wind energy conversion system is typically multiplication of power coefficient, efficiency of the generator 
and efficiency of the gearbox okay roughly on these three parameters so overall efficiency of the wind energy conversion system is c multiplication of cp multiplication of generator multiplication of gearbox okay where we can control this cp uh, by varying uh, uh, or by orienting this wind turbine correspond to different values of pitch angle and different values of tsr okay and there are some uh, uh, you know uh, research going on how can we control this this wind turbine operation corresponding to a maximum value of power coefficient okay so that we can maximize the power extraction now next uh, another important renewable energy generation systems uh, i'll talk about that is called solar energy okay and as you know it is a top uh, form of renewable energy which will not be depleted uh, with time and we have typically average intensity of the light uh, around 1300 to 1500 watt per meter square and we have two forms of solar energy conversion system that is a uh, photovoltaic and concentrating solar plant so photovoltaic use the intensity of the light and concentrating solar power utilize the heat of the solar irradiation okay so former directly converts the solar irradiation to electrical energy whereas uh, this concentrating uh, solar plant CSP converts to heat and then electrical energy. Okay. Mostly we know that uh, photovoltaic type of solar energy conversion system is used in power generation and it is extremely ex extensively used in power generation nowadays. Okay. So, in a typical uh, photovoltaic solar cell it produces only a DC voltage of 0 0.57. Okay. Uh, and it is uh, open circuit voltage i will show you the typical voltage and current characteristics for a typical solar cell in a typical solar cell it can be considered as a constant current source okay and it is a non linear device uh, its performance depends upon the characteristics curve so before i show you this characteristics curve we have different uh, definitions that we one needs to know one is called short circuit current the short circuit current is uh, maximum current produced at a given irradiation and temperature with zero output voltage. Short circuit means output voltage is zero and it gives maximum current. And open circuit uh, voltage means it is maximum voltage corresponding to zero current uh, corresponding to a given value of irradiation and temperature. In fact, uh, similar to this wind uh, energy conversion system where uh, this power uh, available in the wind typically varies with the wind speed. Here also in photovoltaic system, uh, the generation of solar cell uh, depends upon the temperature and solar irradiation of a particular instant of time. Now, there is another definition called maximum power voltage, which corresponds to the maximum power produced by a solar panel. So, voltage and current corresponding to maximum power it is a matter of uh, interest and maximum power current at which maximum power is produced by a current at which maximum power is produced by a solar panel. So, maximum power voltage maximum power current corresponds to the maximum power produced by a solar panel. And this is a typical volt ampere characteristics V i characteristics of a typical solar cell. As you can see there are different operating points one is marked with 1, one is marked with 2, one is marked with 3, another is 4, another is 5. Okay. So, operating point 1 correspond to uh, maximum current okay, at 0 voltage. So, it is of course, short circuit current I S C okay. and operating point 5 corresponds to uh, maximum voltage with zero current which is uh, open circuit voltage or VOC that is given as here 570 millivolt. Okay. And uh, operating point 2, 3, 4 are three typical operating points in which uh, you can see at operating point 3 corresponds to maximum power 
which means that if you multiply this voltage and current it gives the maximum value of power okay and that is also an point of interest to the uh, researcher and uh, also to the people uh, who devise the control of a solar cell or solar panel okay and uh, we wish to operate the solar set corresponding to this maximum power point and this process is called maximum power point tracking okay so as i said a typical uh, voltage uh, in a solar cell depends upon the temperature as well as solar irradiation so in fact uh, uh, solar cell uh, generation will vary with this different seasons in winter it, uh, and winter and in summer there would be different uh, ambient temperature accordingly the solar uh, generation would also vary and uh, also it depends upon the solar irradiation okay now the efficiency of the solar cell is again is matter of interest to us but we know that uh, maximum theoretical efficiency of a solar cell is only around 20 to 25 percent okay so this power density of the solar cell is very very poor okay and this is the maximum theoretical value but actual uh, efficiency is uh, only 10 to 15 percent okay and the efficiency of a solar cell typically uh, a function of few things one is uh, this this particular material is used to build that another is thickness of the air connected to the top of the cell light reflected from the surface to the cell etc okay and based upon that we have different types of solar pv cell and their efficiencies are given mono crystalline uh, solar cell having typical efficiency 20 27% uh, polycrystalline is 14 to 18% and so on okay so there are different types of solar cell and accordingly the efficiency will also vary now uh, as we know that we need to cascade uh, because uh, one typical solar cell will give you only a uh, fractional voltage uh, lesser than 1, so, but in order to uh, use them uh, for uh, typical uh, applications uh, in different for a different uh, point of a network or a different for a different customers, so we need to have a cascaded uh, form of the solar cell and that cascading is done in order to achieve a desired value of voltage and in order to achieve a desired amount of power. Okay. So, you typical example that would be clear, but uh, in typical photovoltaic system we also have different other system along with the solar panel. One is called power conditioning circuit, uh, storage, uh, storage is required particularly if it is operated isolated uh, condition without this connection with the grid also inverters to convert this DC to AC and loads which is of course there. So, this is a typical you know solar PV conversion system as a whole which includes this solar cell which includes power conditioning unit which includes this uh, you know inside power conditioning unit converter is uh, inverter is there uh, in order to connect with the load. Okay. Also uh, this storage is an optional option. Uh, which is required uh, sometimes to store the surplus energy and to discharge when there is a, a deficit energy. Okay. So, there are two modes of operation as we know one is standalone operation another is grid connected operation. In standalone operation it is not connected to the grid and in grid connected operation of course, it is connected to the grid. So, standalone operation particularly needs this uh, storage. Uh, and uh, grid connected mode does not need any storage, it can directly connect it to the grid and maximum uh, uh, and mismatch power that is surplus power or deficit power would be uh, sent to the grid or uh, to be imported to from the grid. This is the equivalence electrical circuit form of this PV cell, uh, it gives a current source, some diode and some resistances this uh, you know is required to, to devise the control of the solar PV and in order to ex, uh, do the further research on solar cells. I am just keeping on this, this is a typical output current characteristics of PV cell and this is the point which I was to, trying to mention what that is called maximum power point taking which means that we, are, we intend to operate any solar uh, PV conversion system to its maximum power 
point uh, correspond to uh, this maximum value of power from where we, from which we get. And there are many uh, approaches to track this maximum power point. Okay. In fact, this is an area of research and uh, people do use many type of MPPT control. MPPT stands for maximum power point tracking control, so that we can always operate uh, the solar PV system to its maximum power point. Okay. There are uh, some typical uh, MPPT techniques available, one is called Pater browser technique, another is called incremental conductance technique. There are many other techniques as well. Uh, which typically uh, which are typically employed to operate the solar cell to its maximum power. Okay. Some advantage disadvantages are there in the both the methods. I am just keeping this you can take a look and finally, we also have some concentric solar power in which the basic operation is something different uh, than the photovoltaic. We utilize the heat of the solar and that heat is accumulated and then uh, that heat is uh, utilized to generate power. Okay. Uh, it is similar to uh, this type of thermal power generation except that in thermal power we, we use burning of the coal or burning of the gases to generate uh, steam, but here it is something different. It is by utilizing the heat available on the solar uh, irradiation or by concentrating the heat we generate power. So, I am not going into detail. So, there are some merits of the solar energy conversion system as a whole. Uh, in fact, uh, it is extensively used because the reduction of the its uh, installation cost and also it is abundant, it can be used for extensive applications. But again, uh, these demerits are intermittency. If you use energy storage, energy storage is the costly and of course, initial cost investment cost one needs to incur in order to install that. Now, here we have some example, numerical example. Uh, first numerical example is suppose we have a solar panel which consists of many solar cell which can which is rated of 20 watt and can produce 10 volt. Okay. Now, you have to decide that how many such solar panel we can make in series parallel combination in order to determine uh, in order to supply 120 volt at 10 ampere. Okay. So, as I said many individual solar cell will constitute a solar panel and many solar panel are used in series parallel combination. So, that we can get desired voltage and desired amount of power from that. So, in order to have uh, 120 volt 10 ampere of current uh, source. So, how many panels we need to connect? So, it is very simple first to find out that uh, you know since you have a 20 watt 10 volt solar panel. So, that means, it gives uh, it, its output voltage is 10 volt and it can max provide uh, 20 divided by 10 that is 2 ampere of current. Okay. So, we need 10 ampere of uh, current. So, we have to connect 5 such unit in parallel, okay, so that each of them will give 2 ampere and you will get uh, 10 ampere. But in order to have 120 volt, you have to connect uh, 12 of such panel in series, okay, so that you get this 120 volt. So, what we will get? So, number of uh, panels to be series in 12 uh, and number of parallel path that we required 5. So, it will be a 12 multiplied by 5, 12 uh, solar panels would be connected in series and such kind of unit, uh, 5 such kind of unit needs to be connected to parallel in order to have this required voltage and power. Okay. Now, another question is uh, uh, how they should be connected. So, you already determine that and the value of the necessary load resistance and total power that can be obtained from the solar cell. In fact, total power uh, that is 120 mu multiplied by 10 that is 1 uh, 200 zero zero watt that is 1.2 kilowatt that much of power uh, can be available and we need a load resistance of 120 by 10 at least 12 ohm to be to connect to get connected with that. 
Now, similar examples are given with different values of uh, you know desired voltage and current and accordingly in the similar fashion you can find out that how many uh, solar cells need uh, solar panels need to be connected in series. Uh, basically, series connection uh, how many uh, panels need to be connected in series that is basically uh, dominated by uh, that is basically decided by uh, the uh, voltage requirement from this uh, overall unit and how many such kind of unit needs to be connected in parallel that is decided by the current requirement or power requirement. Okay. So, one needs to understand that this is very simple and in order to follow this particular part of this lecture one can go through uh, Gonen's book. Okay. So, with this I will stop uh, today and this part of uh, module 7 uh, uh, is finished here. Thank you.